All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about PCI Express and exactly how it could or may not even affect your RTX 5090. Don't forget, the 5090 is the very first PCIe Gen 5 or true Gen 5 graphics device that is out. So we tested it today in Gen 5, Gen 4, and Gen 3 to see whether or not you need a full system upgrade to run something like a 5090 or if it's all just a whole bunch of marketing hype. But before that, I wanna go ahead and announce the winner of our starting 2025 off right PC giveaway. And the winner is actually Dave Dominguez. So congratulations, Dave. Uh, he responded to our email. It's all been announced on Twitter. Uh, here, obviously you guys can see the winning post right here. He actually won by following us on Twitter. Well, following me on Twitter. We're not on Twitter, I'm on Twitter because my Twitter channel really sucks. But hey, you can get even more mediocre content over there. But anyway, Dave, huge uh, congrats to you for winning that system. If you didn't win, don't worry, we got a lot more giveaways coming up. I wanna make 25 like, not the year of giveaways, but I wanna I want to do more. I wanna give back to our community in ways that I make me happy. It's like soul food for me. But soul food for you is gonna be talking about PCI Express today. But first, paying some bills. The Evolve X2 PC Tower from Fantex redefines the desktop computer with its see-through glass design, aluminum interior, and powerful vertical cooling solution necessary for today's high-end hardware. The vertical airflow design draws in fresh air from the bottom and expels warm air out the top via a slanted grill design, moving warm air away from the user. An integrated cable management, support for BTF and Project Zero cable systems, and rear motherboard door concealing all wiring makes the Fantex Evolve X2 one of the cleanest towers available today. To see the full list of specs and see our coverage of the Fantex Evolve X2, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so the discussion of PCI Express uh, lanes, this is gonna be a pretty quick one actually. It was pretty simple to do this kind of testing. Uh, our particular test bench right now is an X870E Tai Chi from ASRock with a 9800X3D on there. So it's actually one of the best case scenarios when it comes to obviously having a full 16X Gen 5 uh, available to the full size uh, you know, 16X slot but also it has plenty of M.2 slots that are also either Gen 5 direct to CPU or through the chipset. Uh, the newest boards actually give you the biggest amount of compatibility when it comes to putting in SSDs and graphics cards without having your, your lanes automatically drop down uh, to a previous generation simply because of bandwidth issues. Now the reason why this conversation is kind of important is not many people are actually running the latest platforms unless you ran out and built like a Core Ultra system or you, you built a 9000 series AMD Ryzen system and got an X870 board to go with it. You might have one PCIe Gen 5 Express slot for your M.2 drive and you might have one PCI Express 5 main 16X slot, but depending on your CPU and depending, depending on your motherboard configuration, your Gen 5 full-size slot for your graphics card might actually drop down to a Gen 4 by 16. It could potentially even drop down to a Gen 4 by 8, depending on your, your configuration. Now, I can't possibly tell you what the best configuration is gonna be. You'd have to refer to your motherboard manual. It's gonna tell you which slots in, uh, are impacted by what in terms of what drive configurations. There's a lot of nuances to motherboards. You have to reference your manual. So I kind of did this in a more of a, a light review format. We have a couple of synthetic benchmarks in here because uh, synthetics are designed to really make small differences look bigger on the chart. And then we have an easy to run title like Borderlands 3. So we're looking for lots of FPS to see how maybe we could saturate that PCI Express bandwidth. And then a hard to run title like Black Myth Wukong, which is a much lower FPS count. So we'll go ahead and start right now with some of the synthetics. So if we take a look at Speedway, which is a uh, ray tracing type of title, this is also averaged over three runs. You, it's kind of funny, you, on top right now is actually the Gen 4x16 at a 14,423. Fun fact, did you know that the score is also the FPS? So for instance, a 14423 is actually 144 0.23 FPS average through the run. So now you can actually know what the FPS is compared to these graphics cards as you look at the scores. So you can see we are definitely within margin of error and run variance on these tests. Uh, the 5090 review uh, was 144.12 or 144 FPS, you know, 0.12 FPS. And the Gen 3 by 16, which really surprised me, only dropped down to 142.86. So you, see, you can see we didn't even lose but 1.5 FPS. Now 1.5 FPS at 140 plus FPS is absolutely margin of error, even with multi-run averages. If we move on to Time Spy, which is a rasterization test, and no, it doesn't work the same way. 255.03 is not 255 FPS. This is just an, 
an accumulated score based on whatever metrics it uses over a couple of different runs. So you can see, interestingly enough, our Gen 4x16 is on top again here at 25,503 graphic score versus our review run of 25,451. And then our Gen 3x16 is a 25,264. So we dropped almost 250 points by going from uh, Gen 5 to Gen 3, actually Gen 4 to Gen 3 technically, um, but we're talking like less than 1% or about 1%. So again, margin of error makes very little difference. Now you're gonna notice something here. These two runs, I was trying to figure out why the heck is our Gen 4x16 actually slightly edging out the performance of our standard testing with the Gen 5x16 uh, test. And it actually comes down to the ambient temperature of the room. I had to verify this because I forgot to turn the heater on. I came into work late today because I had a doctor's appointment today and it's very cold outside today for Southern California. It was in the low 40s this morning. Uh, 40 degree Fahrenheit, so that's whatever the heck this number is in, in the, the Celsius. But it was cold and the heater wasn't on in here. And in fact, our ambient temperature in this room was almost 5C cooler than we normally run our tests at, which is at 22C or about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that actually kept the boost bins slightly higher. So what you're gonna see as we talk about the, uh, and, and so that was on me for not standardizing the room temperature, which is actually very important when you have boost bins that can be affected by only a couple of degrees. The kind of the running theme here that you're gonna notice is that your performance is actually much more impacted by the temperature of the room than the generation of the PCI Express that you're currently running. So if we go ahead and move on to a hard to run title with something like Black Myth Wukong. At 1080p high preset uh, with ray tracing on, and a three run average, our 5090 um, run, which is our standard review run, was 159.8 average. And you can see our 5% low and our 1% low is actually at 139.2 and 128.9. Now the Gen 4x16 was comparative 157, 136, and 127. So we lost like kind of like two FPS, almost three FPS across the board. And our Gen 3x16 dropped to 151.6, 131.2, in 122.3. So Black Myth Wukong, even, even at 1080p, even though it's not a super high frame rate, I mean, 160 FPS is not that high. Um, you can see it actually scaled with the generations, but it didn't actually scale to nearly the degree we thought it would. I mean, our, our biggest delta right now is 151.6 to 159.8, which is, what are we talking here? 8.2 FPS. So not nearly as big of a jump as we would have expected, considering the fact that Gen 3 well, I think Gen 4 devices started launching in like 2017, somewhere around there. So, and then 2019 is when like all the AMD boards and stuff were using Gen 4. Uh, obviously Gen 5 started in 2024. So not a huge difference to be honest, not enough to really make you go, oh my God, I need to upgrade my system. Now what happens if we up the resolution as we're becoming more GPU bound and we're sending less information through that PCI Express lane? Well, again, it has that same linear change, both our average FPS, our 99th percentile, and our 95th percentile. The difference here though is 126.5 for our, our review run, which is at Gen 5, and 121.7 average FPS, which is our Gen 3 run. We lost, what, 0.8 FPS by going from Gen 5 to Gen 4. But as you can see, even in 1440p, it was a very uh, minimal impact. Now, when it comes to 4K, once again, fully saturated GPU utilization, which means lower FPS, um, 85.8 versus 85.6, 77.1 versus 77.0 for the 95th percentile. And interestingly enough, uh, Gen 4 is the one that's on top here at 72.3 for first percentile versus 73.7 for our Gen 5. So Gen 4 edged out on that one, but again, this is run variants and the slightly better temperatures as we talked about. And then Gen 3, we dropped from 85.8 to 83.0. We're talking 2.8 FPS average. Um, and again, our 5% and 1% low is 74.7 and 71.1. So at the end of the day, this, if your CPU was fast enough to not be a bottleneck, because the biggest issue with, if you're running a board that has a Gen 3 PCI Express lane means you're probably running several, at least five generations old on processor, which would be a bigger issue than the PCI Express lanes because your CPU would be bottlenecking something like this uh, much more heavily than the lane saturation or the lane bandwidth. So let's go ahead and move to the easy to run title though, something that can generate a lot of FPS. Here's Borderlands 3 at 1080p. Again, the Gen 4x16 on top, 
slightly because of the frequencies, like I mentioned with full disclosure, the room was colder than our review run. Um, right now the heater's on. Anyway, I digress. 380 versus 374 versus 373. Ironically, in 1080p, even Gen 3 scored higher than our Gen 5. But we are reaching at this point CPU bottleneck and or engine cap, where you can see they are very butted up against each other because we're talking nearly 400 FPS. Now the biggest difference here is 6.4 FPS between the highest at 380 versus the lowest at 373.6. Be very difficult to, to be able to see that. In fact, you can't see that with your eyes. Uh, our 5% and 1% lows, again, kind of trading places there, not in a linear fashion, simply because of the fact that we are talking now, we are, we are near engine slash CPU bottleneck territory with this test. That's one reason why I do like this test. Um, if we move on to a higher resolution though, 1440p, um, you can see they definitely more or less spread out exactly as you would expect. When I say spread out, I mean, we're talking a difference of 288.9 versus 286.9, two FPS or less than 1% of difference between these runs. 95th percentile, 246.9, 245.8, 245.5. And then we have for our one percentile, 229.9, 228.9, and 227.3. And again, these are averaged runs over three runs. So it's just, the bottom line is, I mean, we'll look at 4K just because I ran the test and I'm gonna show it. That one spreads out just a little bit more, which is backwards from what I was expecting simply because of the fact that less FPS to me means less information going through that PCI Express bus, which means that you would think 4K would bring them closer together, but it's actually quite the opposite. So we went from 177.1, which is actually our Gen 4 run, to a 172.7, which is uh, almost 5, PS, 5 FPS difference. That, is our, that was our benchmark run at Gen 5 and then 166.7 in our Gen 3. But our 99th percentile, 95th percentiles are very close together as you can see. One last thing to talk about here is gonna be frame times. Um, this chart, it's just gonna look, it just kind of looks like a kid's drawing because we got some pinks and some blues and some yellows on here. I just had to make colors that you could probably see. The only thing you'll notice is if we look at the light blue line, that's actually our Gen 5 by 16. Um, they're very, it, it's tighter. Then if you look at our Gen 4 by 16 and our Gen 3 by 16, the reason why you can see the yellow, which is the bottom, is because the Gen 3 by 16 has slightly wider frame times or more variance between the highs and the lows. Our pink line is our Gen 4 by 16. Again, slightly tighter than the yellow line, but not quite as tight as the blue line, which is our Gen 5 by 16. So when you have frame times that lay over top of each other like this, like right on top of each other, it shows that there's not a massive difference in frame time. In fact, it's nearly indiscernible which is actually what the FPS showed. So at the end of the day, we're not the first YouTubers to talk about PCI Express lanes, but this is a reoccurring discussion anytime there is a new generation of PCI Express represented on a graphics card. When Gen 2 was the thing and we moved into like Gen 3, back when we started talking about like the RT, or what was it, not RTX, it was like the GTX 580, the GTX 680, people that were like, oh my gosh, it's a Gen 3 card, you're gonna bottleneck it on a Gen 2. That wasn't true then. But then when the Gen 4 devices came out, oh, you have a Gen 3, you're gonna bottleneck it. It wasn't true then. We now have Gen 5 devices out. We talk about Gen 4, you're not bottlenecking it still. So I would be less concerned about what generation your, your platform is, Gen 4 or Gen 5. Um, as you can see, Gen 3 PCI Express bandwidth is not holding back the card. Don't forget, this is still a 9800X3D CPU with its stacked 3D vCache which is gonna be picking up a lot of the load. The biggest issue with running Gen 3 in a realistic world case, like a real world scenario is gonna be you're running an old CPU by today's standards, which will affect the GPU way more than the PCI Express bus is going to. So there you go. Don't worry about what gen you're running. Be more concerned about what CPU you're actually running. That's gonna have a much bigger impact. And if our difference in temperature between these runs and our official benchmark runs by only being about 5C difference in temperature, can have that much of an impact where Gen 4 can actually be beating Gen 5, even though their one to one and a half percent difference overall shows that even slight temperature variances can have a bigger impact on your GPU than even the PCI Express bus width. So there you go. That's my video about PCI Express. I would be less concerned about it and I'd be more concerned about making sure you have the right CPU paired with something like a 5090 
Obviously, as we go down the stack with 5080s and 5070Ti's and 5070s, it'll become even less important and relevant as the CPU gets slower overall. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this uh, helped kind of put some concerns at ease if you're considering getting a 5090. At the end of the day, I don't think it would really pertain to you, any of this, because if you're running a 5090, you're probably the kind of person that already doesn't care about the diminished returns of spending a ton of money for something you, that is not a huge uplift in performance, which means you're probably already running the latest CPUs, you're probably already running the latest platforms, you're probably already running the 128 gigabytes of whatever crazy RAM you can throw in there because you're all about having the biggest and the baddest, which means none of this will matter to you anyway. But if you just happen to be running a, a getting a 5090, I don't know, tax return money or something, and you're throwing it in, say, I don't know, your 9900K system, you have bigger problems than your PCI Express lands. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.